I think it tells me that uh, the war in Ukraine is not going to be fixed. In other words, it will be a very long duration because the sort of pictures with which the public are going to see, the sort of atrocities we discover, prevent any possibility of negotiating with Vladimir Putin. So by definition, uh, we are looking for a regime change, by definition. Now, on the other hand, Vladimir Putin cannot go back without a victory. And at the moment, really, he's got the feet. So he is not going to trade withdrawal for any sort of a ratcheting down of sanctions. So the sanctions stay in place. And I think the implications for Europe are that you will see recession because the sanctions will actually increase and move towards a totally en energy blockade. Markets will have to cope with that. They will have to cope with the fact that taking the politics out of it, which you can't, this is an enormous supply side shock. It will continue in food, in energy, in metals, and I can go on. So that will go on while at the same time we're dealing with inflation worldwide. We're dealing with rising interest rates. I think the 30 year will be at least three and a half percent in a year's time. And we're looking at, of course, supply disruptions in China due to what is happening on COVID, which people are not talking about, but which are obviously another supply side to the global system. That's a lot uh, for markets to really continue to go up uh, and have to have to have to actually overcome this. So I don't think we're there. David, are, are the markets um, arguing that um, actually the central banks will balk at um, hiking rates as aggressively as they're currently suggesting if we see Europe tipped into recession and ultimately uh, the US follow? It, it does seem to me the equity markets are kind of hedging their bets here that actually the central banks will moderate their desire for, well, terminal rates as high as 3.5% in the United States at least, because ultimately inflation will moderate as growth craters. Well, you see, that's a traditional view. It's almost like a Greenspan put, except it's a war put. Now, I actually think it's wrong, and I'll tell you why I do think it's wrong. I think because a war session, uh, a recession caused by war, is different to a normal recession. In a normal recession, output demand go down, inflation goes down. In this sort of a recession, a war session, you actually have output which falls at the same time as costs and inflation rise. You're seeing that in the mismatch in the labor markets. You're seeing that in the price of commodities. And I think that has, has, will continue to push through. So you're faced with a very strange situation where central banks have to choose between their inflation target and growth. And I think in the end, we're going to see at least six months to nine months of central banks pursuing uh, a tighter monetary policy. And I think the ECB will signal that next week, by the way. And the Fed, of course, will lead the pack, meaning the dollar will remain fairly strong. But I think the, the going over the hump and going into declining policy rates and the great push to put more money into the system and bail out equity investors, I think that's highly premature.